Hey guys, I hope you've had a wonderful start to the year and that all the creative juices are flowing just the way that they need to be. And in the spirit of that, today we're gonna to take a look at Soundbox by Audio Modern, which is a sampler plugin that you can use to layer up and customize different sounds using libraries, or you can very easily build your own custom instruments and packs, which is what we're gonna focus on today. What I really like about it is that the interface is very approachable. So if you've never, if you've never made any instruments on your own before, it's really simple to do because it's not bloated with hundreds of different options at any given time, which obviously makes things much more difficult to use. This is the opposite. So let's jump in. All right, so this is the Soundbox plugin. And the cool thing about this as well is that there's no subscriptions, there's no hidden fees or anything. This right here is a free plugin, but in order to activate the way that you can build your own instruments, you do need to have a license for one of the packs. But the second that you do that, it opens up all the tools that you need to make your own instruments. So on Toman, you can go on and just type in Soundbox and it will come up with a, a few different packs. One of them is this one here is called Cosmo. Um, there's also a plugin bundle, I believe. Yeah, the Audio Modern Soundbox bundle that you can go check out as well if you like some of these sounds. So once you get a license, you can um, just drag one of the packs that you downloaded into the plugin itself. So let's take a look at some of the sounds available in some of these packs. So if you click these three dots here, that are in a column, you can access all of the packs. And they're actually, like all the sounds inside all the packs are organized into categories to make it easy to find stuff. But, you know, if you just wanna search through some of the packs, you can just look in this section here and you can see all the ones that I've got. One thing we can do is preview some of the these sounds. And they these are actually groups of sounds, they're layers. So if you click on this arrow, you can see that there, there are multiple layers. So if I, if I uh, play some of these. Pretty cool how it jumps back and forth to your current settings and then also the settings that are within the pack. So you can start to kind of arrange these uh, based on some of these sounds. So what you can do is like, for example, if I wanted to, let's just start with a single sound for now. Let's say I liked this uh, Gorgon glass sound. If I just go down, you can see that there's only one layer available here or one layer as part of this particular sound. And I can actually just drag this onto uh, one of my layers here and then I can play it, right? But I can also go through some of the other packs and isolate some of the sounds that I like from those as well. So let's say, uh, let's find another one here. Even just this one is kind of nice. So if we go down, you can see this is also just a single sound here. And if I activate our second layer here, you can hear that uh, we're playing both of them at the same time, which is kind of nice. So you can start to arrange and sort of mix and match from these different groups of layers and stuff based on you know some of the stuff that you're hearing. Another kind of a cool thing is if I activate all of these layers and then I I click these um, diagonal dots here, this is kind of like the or the icon for randomization. I can actually randomize. So it's pretty interesting to, to figure out some different configurations and you know just leave it up to chance for some cool sounds. Now, instead of using sounds from some of these libraries, what if we just made our own instrument? Now, funny enough, I have this kalimba right in front of me, which is gonna be our example for how we can make our own instrument really easily. So we've got our nice clean kalimba note here. What we can actually do is open up our, you can see this little wrench icon, and this is where you basically drag and drop your audio into different sections of the of the keyboard here. So if I just drag this right onto C here, you can see that it makes just a single key. So I play a C on the keyboard, there's our note. Now what we can actually do is just press map, across, map sample across keyboard and we'll map it to all the keys, right? And even though it sounds pretty nice as is, we can be a little bit more intricate with how we design this instrument. So we can sample more of the keys and make you know more of an accurate representation of this kalimba here instead of using one note mapped across the entire keyboard. We're actually gonna use different notes played on the kalimba with different keys, right? Just like a normal instrument would play. So if we record this. For a more realistic instrument, I recorded each one of the notes available in the scale here. And unfortunately, you know, we don't have access to C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, et cetera. But that's okay because we're gonna just expand those notes to fit inside of our instrument. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. 
So if we open back up our instrument here, we have this very basic version of a kalimba. So I'm actually just gonna delete this here. And now what we're gonna do is just drag in our recordings for each one of our notes to make sure that they are on the, the right keys here. So now we can play our C scale, but with the each recorded note that we had. Now we obviously wanna be able to play some of these black keys as well. So all I'm gonna do is just extend out these zones to cover them as well. So now instead of having one note that's stretched all the way across the keyboard, we have a much more intricate instrument now where each of the notes corresponds uh, much more closely with the way that it would be played here, even though we're missing a couple of notes. Now, if we wanted to keep going, we could keep recording some of the higher notes and make it even more detailed. But obviously we're a bit limited by the kalimba in the sense that we do need to stretch out some of these other ones to cover the rest of the zones if we wanna play much uh, higher or lower notes. So now we have a little bit more of an intricate kalimba. Let's actually add in another layer because that's one of the things that this plugin does best is, is how we can manipulate all these layers and, and get unique sounds. So I'm gonna add another instrument and this time it's gonna be my voice just to add something a a little bit different. So I sang a few notes here. And if you've ever pitched vocals before, you know that it, it starts to sound really unnatural uh, very quickly. And so it's nice to cover larger zones with multiple notes. You don't have to record every single note. In this case, I'm doing a little bit of a balance of, you know, something that's more reasonable to record in a short period of time. But if you wanted to be obviously uh, have a more realistic instrument, you would do exactly what we did with the second part of the kalimba and record more notes here. But I'm just going to cover more zones with those three notes. So if I hop into uh, this next sampler here, so we've got G2, we've got our C3 here and also our G3. And then now we're just gonna drag some of these zones to fill in the gaps for some of the keys that I that I did not sing, obviously. It's really a kind of a measure, matter of taste for you about what sounds best, but this should be pretty good coverage for what we need here. Now if we play this. We can start building together some layers here. And if I press this control tab here, we can change some of the attack, decay, sustain, and release settings and some other stuff. So in this case, I kind of want to increase the, the attack of our, or well, my voice, so that you know you have the initial transient of the kalimba, but then you also have my voice kind of fading in, right? So maybe a little longer. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Another really cool thing I like to do as well when you're thinking about layering is a lot of times you have samples just sitting in your on your computer somewhere that would work perfectly for this. So the way I like to find these is if you just go to the browser and you type in C3, you get all these different options from different packs that you know are, are usually samples. So let's take a listen to a few of these here. This is one that could easily work in addition to these other ones. I have these ones um, from a Juno pack that I kind of like. Maybe this first light one would be kind of cool. So if I go back to the, the wrench icon for our third layer and I just drag this across and press map sample, map sample across keyboard. We add in another kind of a cool layer as well. And here's the release time here. Have a nice fade in like that, a bit more of a complex sound as well. And let's add in one more of these as well to the the fourth layer. Yeah, how about this? How about this flute sound that I found? So we'll add this onto the fourth layer. Map across keyboard. That's pretty cool. We can also get a little bit more advanced with how we, you know, do some of this mapping as well. So like if we took my voice, for example, what we can do is um, let's say I wanted to, I'm going to press apply settings to group and I'm going to decrease the velocity here. Let's decrease it to somewhere around halfway here. And let's find another vocal sample, but this one is going to be a higher velocity, more powerful kind of uh, vocal. So that when we press the key a little bit harder, it's going to activate that sample instead of the previous one. So if I press, um, go to vocal single here. Yeah, maybe we want this one to be our more powerful one. So if I load this into C3 here. So now let's go ahead and set this one here 
to start at 65 and we'll stretch this all the way across. So now when I when I press a note, let's actually um, let's solo our vocal instrument here. Oh, and the other thing we need to do as well is increase the uh, sample start time. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm pressing uh, very lightly. And this is my voice. And then now if I press it harder, we get this other one as well. Now when you're playing chords too, you're gonna play some notes a little bit harder than others. And so it can be a little bit more dynamic if you have multiple layers like that. So now if I play like a really quiet chord, right? It's just gonna be my, my quieter vocals, but if I play the same thing louder, It's gonna jump in with those uh, with those higher vocals. Now we can make this even sound a little bit better too. So like, let's say I wanted to just put some reverb on maybe only the vocal part of this. We can just head to the effects section and then throw some reverb on there. And you can see here, we've got kind of a visual, <laughs> like visual representation of the reverb and you can kind of hear what they all do if you click through them a little bit. So that one's obviously much longer. And longer still. So let's choose this third one just to make it sound a little bit ethereal, you know? So we've got one layer with reverb on it and the rest of them are still just normal or dry rather. So it's nice that you can sort of process them all differently. So you can also like, if you wanted to compress the kalimba a little bit. So we get this really beautiful sound here. Let's say you also wanted to apply some effects to the master. You can, you can do that as well in this master section. Just add some grit to it. So you can play around with those and, and apply effects to the whole thing. One of my favorite parts about the synth though is actually this vector section where you can kind of slowly fade between each one of the layers and uh, create different patterns. You could do random. So let's start by turning this um, this vector on. I'm going to turn the movement on as well. And you can see that it starts to employ this pattern that's on, on the right that we have selected here. So we have the circle selected. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna decrease the amplitude a little bit so it doesn't fade too drastically. And then we'll increase it to listen to what it does here. So. So let's listen to a really drastic version. So it's a really cool way to change up the, the sound a little bit and make it more interesting for the listener. And we can try out some of these other patterns too. Or maybe here. So you can see how fun this is. And also, of course, we have access to some modulation where we can modulate some of the parameters here. So for example, let's add some vibrato to our fourth layer, which is the flute sound. So if I just right click this fine tune and we click add to modulation one and we go back to our modulation one here, you can see that it's been added uh, as a layer here, fine layer four. We can increase the, uh, increase the rate and decrease the amount. One thing we might wanna do as well is save some of these for future use. So if I head back to um, the wrench icon for our first sound, and remember th this is our kalimba sound, I'm just gonna press save as at the top here, and we're gonna call it uh, kalimba one. So now if we click these uh, three dots here, you can see that we have kalimba here ready to access whenever we need it. And so now what we can do is, is create our own pack here. So what we're gonna do is press create pack, and let's name this uh, Deep Thoughts, okay? And you can also include a cover image and change the color and all that, but we're just gonna leave that as is for right now. So now what we can do is save this as a preset. So if I wanna call this like Meditation, let's call it Meditation. And we can choose some of these uh, different genres to put it in. So let's say maybe Chill Out, Lo-Fi, and Pads. Call it like that. 
And if we save this, now if we go to our, our deep thoughts pack here, we have meditation. And if you scroll down, you can see our three instruments are right here available to use. And now also too, if you randomize everything, you have a chance of selecting your own instruments in there as well, which is pretty cool. So really the, the, the world is your oyster with this thing. And especially this is a cool plugin because you can share your presets and your packs with other people and also download other people's packs. So there's a really cool community element that's being built around this plugin. And it's definitely something to check out. So as always, happy music making, happy sampled instrument making, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Peace.